Hey folks, Uniservo here. If you saw my last video of me sorting a uh, bucket of interesting things, you'll know that I have been cleaning out the estate of an IBM old timer. And uh, hey, lots of great stuff is being found. Now this old timer, uh, I think he was a lifer at IBM and uh, in Poughkeepsie and Kingston working on the larger mainframes and also he had been there apparently since the early 60s. Well, that's kind of the golden time, isn't it? With, uh, with all the 360s and 370s and, and later on. Well, it's a formula that says, hey, I might find some good little gems in his stuff. Well, I did, and I'll show you one of them. This card here. I think is a very, very early version of SLT technology. Now, of course, you IBM collectors and such and such like that will say, hey, that's not SLT. SLT is a bunch of aluminum squares. Those are orange. What's going on? Well, I think this was just a earlier developmental iteration of SLT. Now, SLT for a brief overview. Well, normally it looks like this. And yeah, you can see the aluminum squares. Now, back in the very, very, very early 60s, IBM wasn't quite ready to make the jump to integrated circuits because integrated circuits were very crude, very unreliable, very expensive, hard to make. IBM was ready to jump off discrete transistors. They saw what was going on in the future, or what was, what was going to go on in the future, but wasn't ready to make the jump. So instead of uh, the second generation of discrete transi transistors going to the third generation of ICs, they went with the 2.5 generation. SLT, solid logic technology, is actually a hybrid technology. And we'll show you a little bit of that in a minute. But yeah, this I think is from a larger, I found this in the estate as well. I think this is from a larger 360 because it is a physically larger card. But this is normally what we think of when we think SLT. Now getting back to this, what's interesting is that, let's see if we can zoom in there. These look like they have 1963 date codes. That would make them earlier than when I, uh, SLT was actually announced in 1964. There are also some other date codes on this card. Like the resistors are 62s. There are some other things. I think the, uh, the transistors, and incidentally, I don't know if you can see, but the... <laughs> Some of the transistors actually say IBM on top of them. But this thing has got a bunch of 1962 and 63 date codes, including these weird versions of SLT. And you can see, yeah, it sort of looks like SLT. The pins are the same. It's got that ceramic substrate. But it's got kind of a plastic or epoxy orange conformal coating. Now, I've actually seen these before. I think the TechWorks in Binghamton has a card or two with this very early SLT on it. Oh, and another thing that, that IBM collectors will note is the very non-SLT non looking numbers. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to... Well, there we go. That looks pretty good. Uh, weird, weird, weird numbers. Normal SLT starts with 361... Blank, blank, blank. So it's a six-digit number, 361, blank, blank, blank. Well, these are something weird, aren't they? What's also interesting, what I found, is this. The SLT Module Development Handbook. I found this just after getting that module, and it shows some insight into that module. Let's take a look. I'm not going to show you. This is from January 64. I'm not going to show you the first page because it has a name on it, and I'd like to keep some, some, uh, some privacy for the, for the family. But 
That is SLT. It's a small ceramic square with tiny, tiny little transistor and diode dies soldered onto, well, the circuit board with the traces, I think, are some sort of precious metal. I forget what it is. And the resistors are film types and they're laser trimmed. And that's how it ended up being. SLT, they announced it in mid-ish 1964, I think. And they kept making it forever, uh, probably up into the 80s. But new designs with SLT were really tapering off by the late 60s. Uh, they were eventually uh, supplanted by ICs. Uh, IBM finally embraced the integrated circuit technology. They still kept them in the little aluminum square cans, but uh, SLT was more or less retired from new designs. Let's take a look at this book because it is it is fantastic. It shows a bunch of kind of what was going on in the SLT world just before it was released. And there you can see uh, the uh, one of the uh, transistors there, a little die with little balls, ball mounted. Yes, I think IBM was the one that pioneered that. So common today, ball mount. But also, here's some of the more interesting SLT that, that they were working on. Transformers. Here we have an inductor. Got some core drivers there. We have one with a heat sink. And take a look at that. That, that little SLT module doesn't have an aluminum can on it. It's got the heat sink, of course, but it looks just like... these with the conformal coating. Moving on. Oh yes, another thing that's kind of interesting here. Oh, get down a little bit. It's a jumper. <laughs> I've never seen one of those in an SLT module, but hey, you know, just like a circuit board, if you got one layer on a circuit board, sometimes you need to cross a wire. Crude but effective. Now, there's also some stuff in this manual. There's circuits they were working on at the time. There's also some stuff about classes of modules. There, there, there's, there's another interesting one there. That uh, Apparently there were three classes of modules. Class 1, let's see if I can find it. Class 1 was apparently just your plain old standard SLT, the stock stuff. The stuff that you just, when you were designing a 360 or whatever, and you needed some sort of gate, you went, I need one of those, a 361, blah, blah, blah. Class 2 apparently were the custom ones. And, oh, yes, there's a plenty of math in this. Because, you know, hey, math. And class three was the uh, the kind of wild stuff. And I will show you some wild stuff that I was not aware existed. These are some class three modules. Now what's interesting is this one here. Project Big. I've never heard of that. And look at that. They, they, they upscaled SLT technology to an entire card with an edge card connector. And uh, you can see it's also considerably larger, about an inch and a half on a side. I've, I've never seen that. Let's get it back in the picture. I've never seen that. It probably never left the lab. You can also see here some sort of device with uh, uh, what is it? tunnel diodes. I did not know. I didn't. Didn't I? Did know that IBM was playing with tunnel diodes at the time because I think everyone was playing with tunnel diodes at the time. It was going to be the future. Well, tunnel diodes kind of, tunnel diodes kind of fell to the wayside, but apparently IBM was fooling around with them in the lab. Here's another one that I've never seen before. Another. That's a class two. One of the semi-custom devices, although in a 
kind of strange shape, as if they put two SLT modules right next to each other. And you can see here, this idea did come to fruition and production eventually, stacking the SLT modules. I think this was eventually called ASLT, Advanced SLT. There was also an SLD, Solid Logic Dense, which added four pins to the center. The standard SLT, the original SLT, had pins only around the periphery, 12 pins, but they figured, hey, let's stick four more in the center, keep the nice grid array. Now we have 16 pins to play with. That turned out to be SLD, Solid Logic Dense. So this is a very interesting manual. Like I said, I don't think it's on, I don't think it's on bit savers. I need to get it there, see if Al has it. Oh yes, and of course, uh, you know, it's IBM, so you have to have, uh, you have to have your management chart here. Who, who, who's in charge of who? <laughs> but I do not think that Al has this on bit savers, so this needs to be uh, gotten to him. Uh, at some point, because I think it, it really does kind of show a kind of a, a, a slice of what was going on inside of Fishkill. Uh, Fishkill is where IBM did most of their component and semiconductor manufacturing and development. And uh, SLT, yes, was kind of a lot of it was centered around Fishkill. This manual here, and I have to wonder if there are other editions. This is, of course, the January 64 edition. Did they come out monthly? I don't know. It'd be very interesting to actually see a whole run of those. But I've never seen this manual before. It would be so interesting to see the actual month-by-month -month or week-by-week -week or whatever development of SLT because it did turn out to be a very important product. For IBM and hey you know a lot of a lot of <laughs> the things we deal with uh, today with manufacturing uh, with the surface mount ball grid arrays and such like that there was a certain amount of pioneering that went uh, went into uh, IBM did with SLT that we sort of halfway kind of use today well, hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. I kind of figured, you know, I found this card first. I, I tweeted it. And yes, I do have a, a Twitter. It is Uniservo. Uh, so, hey, you know, follow me if you would like. I tweeted it today. And then I found this. I found this in, in a bunch of car manuals. And um, I, since I don't have a Ford, um, well, <laughs> you know, I looked through, because you got to look through this stuff with a fine tooth comb. You really do. And, uh, hey, this popped up out, out of nowhere. And, uh, hey, it's great. It shows just this, this, this tiny little slice of what, it was, what was going on back then. Hey, if any of you IBM old timers are watching this video, hey, maybe did you even work on early, early SLTs and early 360s and such like that? Leave a comment. I'd love to hear more. Because, uh, hey, it's, a lot of you guys are just full, full of stories and, and full of uh, interesting bits and pieces that kind of fill in the picture. There's only so much we can get from, from, the, uh, some, from the external sources, but this is, this is kind of internal, isn't it? All right, hope you liked the video. And, yeah, do all the subscribe and notifications and bells and whistles and all that kind of stuff. And like I said, follow me on uh, Twitter for well, interesting pictures and things like that. Uh, I also do have a Patreon account. And if you like this sort of content, hey, maybe throw a buck or two into the hat. I would really appreciate it. If you can't, that's fine too. I can understand that. Maybe share the video around. And uh, closing in on 1,000 subscribers, I think that's kind of neat. All right, guys, I got to get back to work. Well, I don't know. Might need to geek out about SLT a little bit more. Good bedtime reading. <laughs> Actually, it's pretty, pretty interesting stuff. Well, maybe not the heavy math. All right. Hope you guys like it, and I'll see you later. And if I find any more good stuff, I'll let you know. Bye-bye.